Hello and welcome to Moment of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graham Hughes. So today, 30-year-old Charlotte Owen became the youngest live peer in the House of Lords in history. I, Charlotte, Baroness Owen of Audley Edge, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. A woman with a CV that's been called blanker than Jonathan Gullis's personality. Charlotte Owen apparently worked as an aide for Boris Johnson for a few months and therefore in the orgy of sleaze, nepotism and cronyism that is Brexit Britain, she could become a legislator for life. One that we cannot vote out no matter how bad at her job she is. One who can now pocket 332 pounds attendance allowance plus subsidized travel and meals every day parliament is sitting for the rest of her life which considering she's only 30 years old could be another 60 years but here's the thing we know why ian botham was given a seat in the house of lords after all he did once accidentally tweet a picture of his own cock we know why lady semtex aka claire fox was given a seat because she supports the IRA. Evgeny Lebedev was given a seat for services to Vladimir Putin and the KGB. David Frost got the nod for negotiating an absolutely terrible deal with the European Union that will cost the British economy over a trillion pounds in the coming years. But what on earth has this Charlotte Owen character done? A so-so degree from a so-so university Worked as an aide for a few months. That's it. That's all I can find. Her bio page on the House of Lords website is empty. Why might that be? Well, there is talk of a super injunction, which, if there is a super injunction, we're not allowed to even talk about the fact that there is a super injunction. So let's go with the facts we know. She's young. She's blonde. She's female. She worked with Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, who is famously a cheating, lying, conniving philanderer. We have evidence he cheated on his second wife with Petronella Wyatt, who had at least one of his abortions, and then cheated on Wyatt with a journalist called Anna Vazakli. An affair with an arts consultant named Helen McIntyre produced his fifth child, a daughter who, for a long time, he denied existed. We know that he had an affair with Jennifer Akori, another young blonde whom he gave £126,000 of taxpayers' money to for <clears throat> IT lessons. This is the man who had to have multiple iPads set up in case a Zoom call dropped out because he couldn't be asked learning how to reconnect. So he clearly wasn't paying attention. You could pay the wages for four full-time nurses for that amount of money. His relationship with his now wife, Carrie Simmons, before he got around to divorcing his previous wife, Marina Wheeler. So... One of the rumours is, predictably, that Owen and Johnson made the gruesome twosome together. And this life peerage is her reward? Quite how his current wife, who has just popped out his ninth, maybe tenth child, feels about all this is anybody's guess. And then there's another rumour that she might be related to Johnson. She might indeed be one of his many, many children. Since he has the bulk of the UK media under his tyrannical control, we wouldn't know. Nature famously abhors a vacuum. So the lack of anything substantive being put forward as a reason for this dumb nothing no mark being given a seat in the upper chamber of the mother of all parliaments for life means that vacuum will naturally be filled with rumour and innuendo. There's something fishy going on and the good little subjects of the world king, Boris Johnson, aren't even allowed to talk about what it might be. Now imagine for a moment that there was the even the 
inkling of a rumor of a possibility that Kia Starmer had somehow put either his love child or a lover half his age into the House of Lords. Would the mail let him get away with that? Would the Telegraph, the Times, the Express, the Guardian, the BBC, Sky News, GBBs? <laughs> of course they wouldn't. And that's why, above and beyond all the craziness that's going on in the UK right now, why we desperately need a Labour government. Because there is one thing crucial to the functioning of our democracy, crucial to the future of our country, that Labour have and the Tories do not. And that, my friends, is accountability.